Okay, so today is going to be, I'm going to be talking about an overview of the religion called Mormonism. Lots of people think they know what it is or they think it is just like Christianity. So here is a basic summary of beliefs. The religion was started by a man or a boy, I should say, Joseph Smith in New York in 1820 America. So it's a pretty recent religion, if you ask me. Joseph went into the woods to pray and supposedly Heavenly Father and his son stood near to him and said that every Christian denomination was an abomination and that they were all wrong. And three years later, an angel Moroni gave him golden plates that contained the fullness of the gospel. The church name is LDS, meaning Church of Jesus Christ, which, okay, okay, of Latter-day Saints. So it's not the church, like in Christianity. What's so funny is that I'll be listening to Christian worship and get ads, Mormon ads. And I'm like, okay, and sometimes I see stuff. I'm like, is this Christian? I look and it's, nope, it's just LDS. I'm like, oh my gosh. So just check what you're watching or what you're looking at on the internet because you might think it's some Christian website Turns out you're on their website on accident. So it was established in 1830, the Mormon church, and Joseph Smith was actually... Oreo! Bro! Okay, so, so Joseph Smith was arrested in Carthage, Illinois for treason and a mob killed him. That's how he died. Mormon, okay, I'm, I just wanna say this to be clear. If you're a Mormon watching this, you probably, you might not even believe in all this stuff. And Mormons, just like Christians, don't believe in the same exact stuff. But what I'm telling you is stuff from the official church and stuff they believed at some point. I just want you guys to know that. They hold the Book of Mormon to a higher authority than the Bible and claims to have 15 plus million people across the globe in their church. And, you know, I've been getting this info from books about it, Christian books about it, from websites. So I'll try to cite my sources here, try to go back and see where I got the info from. Because I do want I do want to be like, you know, right. Doctrines. Polygamy. We know this is wrong because just like, just from a practical standpoint, I don't think you could even handle that many husbands or that many wives. And because the Bible, which, you know, they don't hold to the Bible as being that great in comparison to the Book of Mormon because they think it's corrupted like every other religion. But the Bible says that in Genesis, just the standard of marriage, one man, one woman. Baptisms for the dead. Just don't even ask me. No Trinity. Okay. No Trinity. Just from that, it's not Christian. It's at least in the least heretical, which is not Christian, not right, okay? No trinity, they're polytheistic, which means they believe in multiple gods. People don't know this. They think it's just, oh, heavenly father means the father, just like in Christianity, and the son is Jesus. Okay, that is just a surface level. You don't even know if they believe in the same type of Jesus. They're polytheistic. They believe the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are separate entities and multiple gods. So they believe in three gods, but they believe in multiple gods, more than those three. They say the three are united, but united in purpose, not in being. Um, and the purpose, which they're united to, is to bring to pass Heavenly Father's divine plan of salvation. Who is heavenly father in this heavenly father is called elohim which is a term a biblical name for god in the bible for christianity but obviously this isn't the same god as in christianity and they believe elohim was once a man now that's just goofy like what the heck once a man he's he he wasn't god and who was created by another god who then was created by another god who was you get it. It's basically an infinite regression of gods that made gods, which they can't explain because that's impossible. Now, when Christians, going to the Christian view, when Christians um, are talking to atheists and atheists say, well, who created God then? Well, we say no one did because there has to be an uncaused first cause. So there has to be a first cause to the universe that created the Big Bang that was uncaused because then 
if that cause had another cause which had a cause it would just be like mormonism which is not true we know that everything that begins to exist has a cause like the phone and us we begin to exist at some point the universe does too therefore it has a cause god never began to exist because he's god he's infinite in nature therefore he doesn't need a cause so that's just a little um thing for you now it's about to get creepier guys so just stay with me right now because it's about to get really creepy to achieve godhood because in mormonism you could be a god you have to be obedient to the laws and ordinances of the gospel this is works based obviously um not by grace through faith in jesus because of what he did no this is you have to do stuff you have to obey it and how is anyone supposed to obey the law perfectly no human could do this because we're all sinful also heavenly father isn't a spirit in this religion which is very weird we think of god as a spirit he's invisible and watching over us okay anyway um so they think that heavenly father was lit is literally a man of flesh as in it's this created being who was once a human who's now god but he's actually flesh in that he's not a spirit and this is the creepiest part guys they say that um he resides in a planet named kolob now this is just some creepy stuff it's it literally sounds like a cult i'm not gonna lie who's jesus to them the firstborn child of heavenly father so they believe Jesus is a created being. He's separate from the Father. He's not God. What's worse about this, and this is about to like disgust you guys, Heavenly Father, they believe heaven. And what I mean by they believe is the leaders literally telling everyone that this is the doctrine. They believe Heavenly Father directly had sex physically with Mary to have Jesus that take it how you hear it that's disgusting because all of us humans are the creation why is the creator having sex with his daughter like i said it's work based you have to exercise faith repent be baptized and have the laying on of hands by a priestly hood authority they also believe that most people are going to heaven and not outer darkness which is their version of hell I feel like the Bible just disproves that already by saying that broad is the way that leads to destruction, which is hell, and few are going to go to the narrow way. So there's also three levels of the celestial kingdom. That's what they call heaven. There's a lot of stuff. I'm not going to get into it, into it. I'm just showing you the basic overview of it, and then I'm going to disprove more of it after. So this isn't even the fun part yet. This is just like we're just getting to it and also just to lighten up the mood a bit which it's not very lightening but there's a very racist and absurdly funny but disturbing take on why dark people exist raged lucifer cunningly convinced one third of the spirits destined for earth to fight with him in revolt thus lucifer became the devil and his followers the demons sent to this world they would forever be denied bodies of flesh and bone those who remain neutral in the battle were cursed to be born with black skin this is the mormon explanation for the negro race the spirits that fought most valiantly against lucifer would be born into mormon families on planet earth these would be the lighter skinned people or white and delights them as the book of mormon describes them okay so after hearing that i would be quite disturbed this is where it gets important there's a modern move of mormons trying to call themselves christians but in the past their own teachers and leaders are trying to separate that and say christianity was corrupted and so why do they want to be like us now because before they said Christians corrupted, that's the whole reason Mormonism came out, is because he thought 
Joseph Smith thought that all the Christian demon the Christian denominations were all wrong, and I think it's because they probably want to kill off the stigma of being a cult. The most common and most kind of funny answer they give Mormons is to non-believers in Mormonism is pray about it. And if you feel the burning of your bosom, I don't know if the bosom is your chest, your breasts or your whatever, then that's confirmation that the gospel, their gospel of Mormonism is true. So that's a subjective feeling. Um, and I feel burning in my bosom that it's wrong. So this is the fun part. This is going to be the fun part. We're going to disprove it. Not in a mean way. We're going to go through it. I'm going to show you some like cool stuff. So you're not just looking at me. Okay. The main topics. So here are some falsehoods that need to be explained. The golden tablets. Okay. The whole foundation of Mormonism. Joseph Smith claimed to have translated the golden tablets that were in reformed Egyptian into English. Now, Reformed Egyptian does not exist. It's not even a real language. Um, so, yeah, just people who know about languages, actual scholars and stuff, it's only Egyptian. There's no Reformed Egyptian. And what he was translating was not even correct. And we know this because there's actually other books that Mormons hold to, not just the Book of Mormon. There's the Pearl of Great Price. I think there's a few other ones. I'll put them on screen, but one of them, and I'll show it on screen which one it is, um, was actually an Egyptian funeral text that was not in the slightest anything about Jesus or God. And he just acted like, oh, he translated it to English, but the Rosetta Stone kind of like changed the game on how we understand how to translate Egyptian and no one has found the golden tablets how convenient because it was taken back to heaven or the angel took it so next is failed prophecy there's probably multiple things but just to keep this video short I'm just gonna talk about one there was a failed prophecy about the temple being built in a certain place um, on the hill Cumorah or on another place I'll put on screen right now with the title being built in one generation now one generation is one generation it's been years I mean like probably maybe like 200 years or less since the founding of Mormonism it's definitely been past one generation and it hasn't been built yet so that is a failed prophecy now we know if something is a failed prophecy, that means the prophet was not a true prophet. Geography is non-existent. Now, there's made up maps that Mormons kind of try to make up for the places in Mormonism that have no evidence, nor do they match with other Mormon maps. They're all conflicting and they can't place it on Earth because there's nowhere near Earth that even looks similar to these maps. And I think they can't place it onto the earth because it wasn't on earth. It's fake. Um, also, there's no evidence for the ancient cities that supposedly were built because there's these tribes, the Nephites and these other people that are part of the story. And there is a war. Now, if a huge city existed, it's impossible that it would lead, that it would leave no trace and be erased in history. If this civilization existed, we would see evidence in archaeology. There hasn't been. And this is where we get to the next thing. The civilizations are non-existent. There's no evidence for the Nephites in history or the Lamanites. And the Lamanites are supposedly the ancestors of the native people. And the only tribe to live. I guess they beat the Nephites in a war. Now, this is about to get into some real science stuff plants and animals in the area so first nephi 1825 and i just want to say as a christian reading these verses is actually like like weird you know what i mean i'm used to reading stuff genesis to revelations 
saying the word first Nephi is just uh, yeah it's just weird but yeah first Nephi 1825 second Nephi 12 7 in Modish 99 I don't even know if I said that right if I even maybe it was a typo but those are the, the places I'll put it on screen slowly each one so you can actually have time to read it talking about plants and animals in the areas of the Mormon lands or whatever they think was in that area now this is the wrong agriculture and the wrong animals living in the locations they're talking about about the Americas supposedly Jesus came to the Americas after resurrecting which is I don't know um, this is a wrong agriculture because it talks about wheat and barley when it was actually beans, corn, and squash. And the animals too, there's no horses. Um, horses came when the Europeans came. It was dogs, turkeys, and other stuff. So the ancient Americas wouldn't have cattle or even elephants or any of that stuff. No way. This is just wrong. Now, metalwork and writing. First Nephi 1825 says there's gold, silver, and copper, but metals like those weren't used like that. And not a single site in the ancient Americas can be said that steel was smelted. And um, the Mayans also, I, I get Mayans and Aztecs. I don't know if they're the same thing. Anyway, also the Mayans didn't even use metal. So how is it possible that these People had metal swords, metal plates, because that's what they say these um, the ancient civilizations had in the Book of Mormon. And they didn't, they didn't write on metal plates. For some reason, just like the golden plates that Joseph Smith found, he thought that the people wrote on metal plates, so it would be very costly to write when there was just paper. You could just use um, papyrus or whatever other ways you know and they say the Nephites were a culture of writing now they should have left a clear record of their existence in history yet there is none even though supposedly thousands thousands of them existed now if they're a culture of writing they should be writing a lot there should be some historians writing about stuff and there would be at least one scrap of evidence for Nephites if they really existed. And there is none. Now, the currency, the moolah. They say that metallic coins were used. Um, there were no metallic coins used. If you would have guessed. Um, that would predate the coming of the Europeans. Because when the Europeans came, then, you know, it's possible and they used it. But not before the white folk came okay so no warfare there's been okay the warfare there's this war that happened with the lamanites and the nephites there's been the lamanite extermination of the nephites a tragedy yet there's no artifacts or evidence for this if two million people died like they said and steel swords were used and the skeletons of dead bodies should still be there. Why don't we see it in the locations where this supposedly happened? Um, yeah, there weren't any metal swords used. Stone tools were used, some made of obsidian, flint, and the ancient Americas, but no metal like the Book of Mormon says. Um, temples. Second Nephi 5.16 um, says temple was built in the ancient times in the area. Now, the Book of Mormon claims to uphold the Old Testament laws, but the people who were priests at that temple were not Levites. So why is God giving a revelation that contradicts what the Bible says in the Old Testament? And let's just think about this. They claim to uphold the Old Testament law. Yet they say the Bible is corrupt. So why are we cherry picking? Are we just saying parts of the Bible are corrupt and some of them aren't? Like, what are we saying? Because how can you trust any of the Bible if some of it's corrupt? It's like, you know, it just makes things harder for their religion. 
Now, historical figures. None of the prophets that are in the Book of Mormon or in Mormonism can be proven to exist. There, even though we know people of the Bible have been proven to exist and prophets, um, there's no proof for Christianity at all in ancient America or Mormonism at all in ancient America. Because supposedly Jesus came into the Americas even though he really had no reason to um, because he already completed what he had to do on earth. And yeah, he supposedly came and there should be some evidence in ancient history that these people were Christian, um, but no, they were serving false idols. You know, I think it was the Aztecs or the Mayans were literally doing human sacrifices, killing people. So yeah, that doesn't seem Christian, doesn't seem like Jesus came to them at all. The civilizations we find uh, throughout Central America tended to peak, find their great climax uh, between 600 and, and 900 AD, well after the events described in the Book of Mormon. The Lamanites are said to have annihilated the Nephite Empire around 400 AD. So of the three people groups mentioned in the Book of Mormon, the Lamanites are the only ones that survived, becoming, according to the Book of Mormon, the principal ancestors of Native Americans. Now here at the Hill Cumorah, we have this plaque that specifically lists us as Lamanites. It's written to the Lamanites, who are a remnant of the House of Israel, that's listing us as being specifically written to in the Book of Mormon. No se ha encontrado ninguna evidencia de una cultura procedente del territorio de Israel llamada Lamanitas o Nifitas. No hay ninguna evidencia. The book claims that Jesus was born in Jerusalem, even though he was actually born in Bethlehem. Now, it's so funny that Joseph Smith got this basic fact wrong, and the book is claimed to be the truth. Now, the Book of Mormon is a hundred thousand million percent wrong. It's 19th century religious fiction. If any Mormons are watching, I just want to say in a loving way, you have been deceived by a false gospel. Galatians talks about if anyone preaches a gospel that's different from the one we, we preach to you, and these are eyewitnesses and people who knew Jesus, who knew people who knew Jesus, it's wrong. Even if an angel comes and teaches you a new gospel, let that angel be cursed. And we know that the, the devil, and the, these are just common verses of the Bible. The devil deceives people by acting like he's an angel of light. And I do think that the angel Moroni and the angels or whatever he saw in the woods was purely demonic. And I just want any Mormons to repent and turn to the true Jesus who died for you, who is God. Joseph, Joseph Smith is not a prophet and the Bible is not corrupt. I want you guys to actually research it. I don't, I just don't want you guys to just say that I'm wrong. And I do want to see comments. If you're a Mormon or you're a non-Christian and you're like, hey, and you have something on Christianity or you have something about Mormonism, you want me to research any proof for Mormonism or something like that, please let me know in the comments. Please let me know what you thought about this. Um, this is the end of the video. Yeah, and if I got anything wrong, any info wrong, tell me, because I will, you know, put in the comments, pinned stuff that I got wrong after this video is uploaded um, so people could see it. So, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye. Why they be hating on me? Guess they ain't thinking I'm Chris Rock. I keep it real, I'm a G, I keep going, ain't taking no pit stop. These are my shoes, the harvest moons, ain't rocking no flip flops. Got the Bible going viral like it's TikTok.